him that hath understanding count the number of the beast, the beast. For it is the number of a man, and his number is six hundred three score and six. According to science and the satanic system, the earth is supposedly tilted at a 23.4 degree angle off vertical. And that leaves you at 66.6 .6 degrees off horizontal. Now what are the chances of that? You think this is just a coincidence? Take a look at this. Earth is supposedly orbiting around the sun and moving at 66,600 miles an hour. Another thing I want to point out here, let's take a look. Now let's take a look at this model with the Earth supposedly orbiting the sun. And of course, the moon orbiting Earth. And while this is all taking place, Earth is supposedly rotating. Let's take a look at this image here. Of Polaris, the North Star. Take a look at this model here. Now, explain to me, for anybody out there, how is it possible for the North Star or Polaris to remain constant above the supposed North Pole while it's orbiting around the Sun? It makes absolutely no sense because it doesn't happen does not take place. That simple. Moving on, the astrolabe is a beautiful and intelligent device and can be traced back to around 200 BC. It has many uses, such as the sun's path and the time of day. It's made up of four plates and a ruler and together each part has specific uses for measuring, observing and calculating. The device can be used for star locations, cardinal directions, wandering star positions, sunrise and sunsets, eclipses and so much more. And this still works today. No CGI and no Wi-Fi needed.
This one is called the Vela Pulsar, and it's magnificent. It's a highly magnet magnetized neutron star. And as it is oscillating, you can see what's happening. It's shooting a radio frequency out of itself. When they aimed the radio telescopes at the Vela Pulsar, this is what they heard. And this is what this guy does 24-7, day and night, 365 days a year. The Vela Pulsar sounds like right now, this is it. Listen to this. about you but I that blew me away I'm thinking wow this is incredible He says, praise him sun and moon and praise him all you shining stars. That's not just a poetic idea. That's really happening because stars don't just shine. Stars also sing. If we're off by a factor of two or a factor of 10, we call that horrible. We say something's wrong with the theory. We're off by a factor of 10. However, in cosmology, we're off by a factor of 10 to the 120. That is one with 120 zeros after it. This is the largest mismatch between theory and experiment in the history of science. What is gravity? You have no idea. Okay, next question. <laughs> Here's the difference. We can describe gravity. Okay. We can say what it does to other things. We can we can measure it, predict with it. But when you start asking like what it is, I I, I don't know. ask a deeper question than I meant to? Yeah, no, you were meant to ask deep questions. Apparently I was. In life. So uh, to say, what is it? I think Einstein, in an Einsteinian answer, we would say gravity is the curvature of space and time. And that, and objects will follow the curvature of space time. And we, we interpret that as a force of gravity. Hmm. That's probably the best answer I can give to a what is gravity question. Or why is there gravity? That's the best I can do there. I think that that's a good start.
When I first made the correlations between Kabbalah and science, I was stunned. We do know that Isaac Newton had access to certain mystical texts, certain texts of the Kabbalah. Well, the Kabbalistic description of creation is coming from a single little point, from a speck, and of having matter form and time and space form all together at the very beginning. This sounds very much to me like the description of the Big Bang. I couldn't believe that the Kabbalists could derive these truths without really knowing any mathematics or physics. Zohar says those things. It could just have been a lucky guess. Could just have been a lucky guess. Could just have been a lucky guess. I don't know. The Zohar's notion that light is a realm of no time and no space is quite consistent with special relativity. It's rather amazing, this uncanny reflection of some of the most advanced cosmology coming from our satellites, coming from our atom smashers, coming from our blackboards that are mirrored in the Zohar and ancient Kabbalistic texts. We do know that Isaac Newton had access to certain mystical texts, certain texts of the Kabbalah. Now, the first lunar mission to the moon wasn't so much about going to the moon. It was about having an event so you can go high enough to take a picture after 500 years to prove it was a ball. The moon landing and the towers falling. And they had as king over them the angel of the bottomless pit, whose name in Hebrew is Abaddon, but in Greek he has the name Apollyon. <laughs> and they had as king over them the angel of the bottomless pit, whose name in Hebrew is Abaddon, but in Greek he has the name Apollyon. Most people saw the lunar landing and they swear on it because they heard it on the radio. <laughs> Morning, ladies and gentlemen. Let's see just how evil NASA is. Let's take a look at the Antarctic and Arctic circles. Oh, did you like that? 66.6 .6 degrees north and 66.6 .6 degrees south. Now let's go over the diameter of the moon. This is a new one. I actually didn't know. It's 2,160 miles, but you take six times six times six. There you go, 2160. The surface temperature of Uranus. Oh, there you go, negative 216, which is Six times six times six, 216. Oh, you thought we were done. Let's do Pluto's orbital velocity. Scroll down here. Oh, there we go. 666. Six, six. The speed of sound in knots. Speed of sound. Oh, well, look at that. 666 knots. The Earth's circumference in nautical miles. Oh, 21,600. There you go, ladies and gentlemen. Again. 600 times 6 times 6. Another coincidence, 21,600. How far is Mars from the Sun? <coughs> 1.666 astronomical units. Now let's look at Ceres' synodic period. And just as you expected, 666 again. The devil's in the details, ladies and gentlemen. Saturn's orbital distance in kilometers. Take a look at the numbers. Oh, 
She's out of this world, the current commander of the International Space Station, about to break a big record tonight. Here's ABC's Gio Benitez. They call it the Peggy Factor, Mission Control's code word for the way superstar astronaut Peggy Whitson always gets the job done. I love it up here. Tonight, Commander Whitson making history with her record for any American. By the time she lands in September, her tally will be 666 days in space. Will be 666 days in space. 666 days in space. The greatest trick the devil ever pulled was convincing the world he didn't exist. Take a look at this footage supposedly provided by ISS. This is nothing more than CGI. Nothing more than a cartoon. Nothing about this is real. And this is what you base your belief that we live on a spinning ball. This is complete garbage. There's an old saying in Tennessee. I know it's in Texas, probably in Tennessee, that says, fool me once. Shame on, shame on you. It fooled me, we can't get fooled again. And what you're seeing here is a mirage. We typically would not be able to see this from the Lake Michigan shore. We talked about this last night. Conditions are right on the lake, but we're actually seeing a mirage of the Chicago style. That fake garbage. You get this. All CGI. Computer animated. Looks like a video game. All lies. Time for you to wake up. Stop believing in fairy tales. This calls for wisdom. Let the one who has understanding calculate the number of the beast. For it is the number of a man, and his number is 666. Six, six. If NASA is right and there is, and you know, we do live on a ball, they're going to have to make up that curvature. If it's not in the 20 miles I'm shooting, well then that means it's got to be made up further on down the line. So you can't have it both ways. You can't say we live on this ball and then say, oh, you can't detect the curvature. Well, you got to detect it somewhere because if it's not dropping here, it's going to have to drop even more down the lines in order to make that circle, that ball. They say we live on and it's pretty round that blue marble they give us is perfectly round
Well, you gotta detect it somewhere, because if it's not dropping here, it's gonna have to drop even more down the lines in order to make that circle, that ball they say we live on. And it's pretty round. That blue marble they give us is perfect. You actually compound the problem if you start using the argument, well, there are, you know, peaks and valleys and hills and mountains and plateaus and canyons and blah, blah, blah. All you're doing is pushing the problem further out. And eventually you, the ball earther who uses this argument, are the one who's in danger of falling off the edge or something. Because you can extend that out only so far and then you're going to have to correct the terrain back to that 8 inches per mile squared so that you can have your 25,000 miles per mile fall. The abyssal plain is the actual bottom of the ocean for the most part. Uh, it is the deepest part of the ocean anywhere. The very, I mean, the, the flattest part of the ocean, excuse me. Not necessarily the deepest, but it's the flattest place on earth. We got continental shelf, continental slope. We have submarine canyon. We have deep sea trench. We have abyssal plains over here and over here, flattest places on earth. So we're going to summarize our lesson by looking at these different parts of the, of the map here and try to find some of the features. We're going to start out down here at the tip of South America because it's got such a nice continental shelf sticking out here. And then we can see the colors very clearly graduated. Uh, so we've got a continental shelf, and then we can see this area here where it slowly gets darker and darker. That would be our continental slope dropping down into a nice large abyssal plain here. Okay, a nice large abyssal plain. And if you look at this map, there are quite a few areas where we've got some huge areas of abyssal plain, okay? Abyssal plain areas here and here and here and around here. Um, and and uh, these abyssal plains can be right, parallel right along the mid-ocean ridge.
According to Pythagorean math, the 25,000 mile circumference ball Eratosthenes invented does not allow for us to ever, ever be able to see the supposed edge of a horizon that presents itself at eye level. Yet whether we're on the ground or flying up to 37,000 feet in an airplane or sending up a weather balloon to over 100,000 feet, there's that totally flat horizon straight ahead at our eye level. Always. That's simply not possible if it's receding downward and away from us at a rate of 8 inches per mile squared, which is what it must do. But once again, in reality, we don't see this. I stand straight up and I look straight out and there's the horizon at my eye level. Not possible with Pythagorean math on Eratosthenes' ball. The single most effective method of brainwashing is simple repetition. A steady, constant exposure to the same idea over and over again until the mind accepts it as truth. Very much related to this is the use of symbols for the power of a symbol is that it can in itself contain rather complex ideas, an entire belief system even, boiled down to a solitary, recognizable visual cue. Every time that visual cue is seen, it subtly reinforces whatever inherent concepts have been ascribed to it in the mind of the viewer. In the case of the symbol of the globe, when we see this icon, we see so much more than just a sphere. For embedded alongside the construct of the globe Earth is the correlating universe in which it is said to be moving, orbiting, spinning. And connected to the concept of the spinning, spiraling universe is the supposed origin of that universe billions of years ago. Along with the evolutionary origins of that vast universe, comes the philosophical conclusion that humanity is ultimately no more unique or special in our existence than a bacteria growing on the bottom of a rock, and the assumption that the universe would inevitably have randomly spawned a host of other species of life throughout the vast reaches of space. We assume that the symbol of the globe could only be so thoroughly ubiquitous and universally accepted, because it is what we all know to be the truth. We never stop for a moment to consider the possibility that perhaps the complete inverse might actually be the case. We all think we know it to be true because it is simply so universally accepted and constantly reinforced. But what happens when people start to actually question the monolithic paradigm of the majority? What happens when an individual attempts to stop and ask themselves just how many times they've really seen a true, genuine, undeniable photograph of the globe, and how many times they've merely seen pictures, logos, animations, renderings.
What do they finally begin to see? Skylar, I was medicated. I mean, I, I, I could have said the world was flat. You know what I think? I think you accidentally told the truth. This is basically the biggest thing you could possibly lie about. The best way to brainwash the whole world is to lie to the whole world about what the world is. They've stolen our mind from us and stuck us on a cartoon ball. It is photoshopped, but it's, it's, it has to be. Everything in the sky revolves around us, just as it appears if you look up and use your own eyes, your own senses. The vanishing point of perspective from your point of view, which is what the horizon line is. It is not the curvature of the Earth, as you've been taught. They stole your mind. They stole my mind. You've been fed a false system. You've been shown CGI images with a ball earth with a horizon that curves. Of course, you can measure curvature if it actually existed. It's been tested over and over again and found to have no curvature whatsoever. You've just been lied to and shown pictures and you believe those. Science, in fact, shows that the earth is flat and motionless. Now, one thing I really want your generation to embrace is that the earth is a closed system. We cannot leave the Earth. There's no place to go. I just recently gained my mind back. It's flat. That begs the question, hey, what the hell have you been showing us this ball for all this time? What have you been doing with our money? Did you guys go to space? Is evolution actually real? Did you guys just make this shit up? These are the questions we need to be asking. space and it stays wherever I put it. You see, this is quantum trapping. So it's actually floating above the surface. Yeah, it's not floating, it's locked above the surface. shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free.